Hello everyone, welcome back to the Market Chat. My name is Richard Moglin. Joining us today is a very special guest, Tomas Claro, uh, one of the top performers of the 2020 US Investing Championship with a final return of 497%. And today we'll be diving deep into his process, how he traded last year, and also his background and style. So uh, Tomas, thanks so much for taking your time and, and speaking with us today. It'll be a lot of fun. How are you, Richard? No. Doing great, doing great. Sorry for like we we spoken we've been spoken for like I don't know months to do yeah. this, uh, <laughs> but we're finally doing so. No, I think uh, it'll be fun. Yeah, I, I'm glad we finally uh, both found a time. So uh, to start things off, I always like to hear about people's backgrounds, how they first got interested in the markets, and how they developed their style. So yeah, could you talk about um, your background and and also maybe any books that have helped you or um, helped you develop your own style? Sure. So. I don't know if you know, but I'm from Chile. I worked for 12 years on the sales and trading on a few brokerage houses and ended up heading the institutional trading desk on one. So that's that's when I started trading. I, well, first of all, putting orders for clients and trying to like match the order flow and stuff. And then I, I got a little more into trading, trading my account and they trading some clients money. I opened the arbitrage uh, desk on one of the brokerage. So I, I did a lot of arbitrage trading ADRs with the New York Stock Exchange and Chile ADRs. So I, I think that's like my background. I, I, started, I started there. And how long have you been involved in the business overall? I will say been like 15 years now. Wow. Nice. So yeah, I, I kind of think about it and it's like, oh my God, I'm, I'm old. <laughs> no, no worries. No worries. And, um, <laughs> and, and throughout this experience, how did you develop your own personal trading style? Was there, there particular books that helped you along the way? Was there mentors? Uh, how, how did you come to the current trading strategy that you use? Um, I think a common book that everybody mentions, and, and, and I think it was my, I don't know, my life changing book, it was Market Wizards. Right. In, in Chile, the trading community is, is not as big. So there are, I, I, there's a lot of institutions, hedge funds and stuff, but you, but you don't see a lot of like traders that do only trading, right? So, mm -hmm. So I started reading Market Wizards and, uh, and it was like, wow, there's a whole new world out there of people living on trading. And, and I say, so, so it can be done. And, and also I started reading about risk management uh, because I you know the first Market Wizard is really old, but, but they all say the same things, right? right? Risk management, stuff like that. So that was like, life changing for me and then i i read of course the reminiscences of, of stock operator i read the the john murphy book then i i, I started do, doing the cmt material and I'm, I'm trying to finish it i i passed the first one but i i haven't done the second one yet was no time um and then I started like diving into this world, uh, watching seminars, uh, trading seminars and YouTube videos. I found out that there was this really big world outside. Right. And that, that was awesome. That's, that's how I learned. But I, but I will say market research was for me like the, the life changing, I don't know, moment or anything. Right. And we're so Market Wizards highlights a bunch of, of top, top traders and they talk about their styles. And um, and I, I also highly recommend that book. I think uh, I'll, I'll drop a link down below. Um, but it, in that book, were there any particular chapters or, or traders that really you really vibed with and you want to kind of model your trading after them? I think Marty Schwartz was the one that I liked the most because he was doing like intraday trading and, and short term trading. Right. And that was, for me, I, I'm, what I found out is that I, my mind is like, I don't know, short-term trading. It's yeah. what I try to adapt. Um, he was doing great. Um, I, I don't know. 
doing these crazy yeah. returns. So that was like, wow, so this guy is doing it. And then everybody else in the book, it's like they have these big names and they were all like, you know, super famous. <laughs> so I, I think it was the whole book, even the guys who did commodities of futures, it, it was, was like a aha moment. Like, like, okay, there's more in, right. Actually, there's more out there that, I don't know, only Chilean equities, right? So absolutely. <laughs> And um, 2020 it was a fantastic year for a lot of trading styles. Um, how does that year's performance compare to the the previous years or so? And and has it has it been a, a dramatic shift in your performance over the past couple of years, or has has it been kind of a steady, just getting a little bit better every single year? I was doing some steady improvements. Then in, in 2019, I I I, I did actually great. Mm -hmm. For me, and then 2020, it was it, I don't know it, it it was a crazy year. It, yeah, it I think it might be my best year, but also because I I had more my account was bigger also because I I was growing it, but I, I don't know I took some strong bets and went all in with it. I almost lost everything on March, so it, it, it was a crazy year, but, but I think what was, was one of the best years. This year has been a good one, but not as good as, as last year. It's been a, a tougher environment, especially in, in Chile. The gotcha. rest, I think, has been easier. For sure. And um, tell me a little bit about uh, what made you actually go ahead and enter the U.S. Investing Championship. Um, because uh, it, it definitely takes uh, a lot of confidence to go up there against uh, top, top traders and, and try to compete with them. And you you did an excellent, excellent job. There are, there are so many top traders and and you obviously uh, knocked out of the park with your performance. But yeah, tell me about making that decision and, and actually joining that contest. So the first time I read about it, it was on Market Wizards. Mm -hmm. uh, these guys mentioned there was this trading competition years ago and I was like, whoa. That's fun, like comparing yourself with, with other people. And then I was, I kind of forgot about it. And, and late 2019, I was, I, I tried to follow a lot of people on Twitter that do trading and and there was this guy that I, I, I don't remember his handle. It's like a lone wolf, something that he was, he was a trader, I don't really remember, but he was saying, okay, so I joined the competition on the last three months, but I'm doing great. And I was like, what, what competition? And I was like, wow, this, this, the, the financial competition, it's back. Um, right. And it was like, I checked my, my returns and I was like, whoa, I, I, you know, I think I can actually might win this thing. So and then I joined next year. It's like, okay, so I've been trading for a while. I, I talked with some friends and so how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing well, but I had no idea if I was any good or if I was bad. Maybe these guys are doing, I don't know, thousands percents a year. Or so, and I'm doing a hundred and it's like, well, you're really bad. And in Chile, you see smaller returns than in, in, in like the US or um, Etc. So I said, okay, I, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it and see what happens. <laughs> and uh, what was it like each month seeing everybody, everybody's uh, results? And, and what did you feel a lot of pressure doing this competition? So at first it, it was, I don't know, it was fun. Mm -hmm. The whole year was fun, but at, at first it was fun. It was like, okay, I'm going to try. How, how is it? Uh, and okay, I did a good January, did a good February, and suddenly I was like, I, I think, of, I don't, I don't remember if I was in the first one, but in top three, and I was like, whoa, so I actually have a chance in this. Um, then the month started to go, and, and the competition became became really, really tough with with yeah. Matt and Oliver and a couple of other guys. And the last months, it, it, it was, I don't know, I was super stressed. I was like, I tr wanted to take vacations, but I said, no, I, I can't take any vacation. I can't go anywhere. I, I need to win this thing. 
I was like I don't, entering in a trade. And it's like, oh my God, I, I can't blew it. So it was actually really stressful the, the last yeah. months. I, I don't know for some of the other guys it was like this, but for me, it I, I think in the, maybe the last three months or so, especially the, the last three months, I don't know, Oliver went up, then he went down, I went up, then Matt went up. It, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, so, was it was really fun to watch as an outsider, but I'm sure I'm sure it was stressful for sure. Yeah, so I, I would send my results and uh, like send an email to Norma and ask him, so how do I do? I'm still first. I can't answer you that. You will see results in two weeks. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> right. And um, but it was fun. It was fun. Yeah. And, and obviously 2020 turned out to be an amazing year for a lot of different styles. Um, but it was also a very tough year because you obviously had to handle March and you said you, you almost, um, you suffered a pretty big drawdown in March. Is that what you said? Um, it, it would be awesome to go through a chart of the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ, if you want to bring that up and talk through kind of how you traded each of the different periods, if you remember. Um, sure. Let yep. me show you what you shouldn't do and what I did on March. Yep. So I'm not going to show you a chart of the s and I'm going to chart going to show you a chart of a specific stock that I traded a lot in March. So I don't know if you can see it. Yep, just came up. So this is a Chilean stock called NLM that it also has an, an ADR. Um, in March, well, last year also I, I was finishing school. I, I, I did an MBA at the University of Chicago. Mm -hmm. So I, the, the first days of March, I was in London, like the, the first two weeks I had classes there and I had a position on, on, on other names, and, but I didn't focus much and I, and I couldn't trade. Then one of the names um, announced a capital raise. So it went like down like 20%. So I was doing awful. And, and when I came back home, to Chicago, COVID things started to hit, and I was I, I wasn't doing my best in trading, and so I this was one stock that I traded heavily, and I said, okay, this COVID thing, because I also have I have a PR agency and, and, and we do events in Chile and stuff, and I and I thought this this COVID thing is going to pass in like a week. It's, it's, it's like another flu and everything. So I, I started like trying to, to pick a floor mm -hmm. and, and betting heavily on the rebound. So, so like the first time I bought here, it kind of jumped the next day. Then it went down. Then I added here. Then I was like, oh my God, okay. Then I, then I got stopped here. Then I bought again here. Then I got stopped here. So basically I... I don't know, half of March, I was trying to find the support and betting heavily in it. And I was doing exactly the opposite you should do. I was increasing size so I could recover the losses. Right. And I was like, okay, no, now I'm, I'm going to find it. Now I'm going to find it. And, and, and I remember it was mid March and I was uh talking with my, 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 my ah, sorry with my wife and i was like okay so i blew 60 percent of the capital i might have to search for a job wow and it was like maybe i'm, I'm, I'm not good at this uh she was like no okay well think about it let me know so i took it off i, I sold everything and i said okay what what am I doing? I'm doing the exact opposite of what I should be doing, right? So, okay. So volatility is, volatility is really high. Okay. Stop increasing positions. You got to um, do smaller positions. Okay. So you're not trading on your best. You're, so don't do size. Go smaller, go smaller, go smaller. Okay. Regain confidence. And I started, okay, doing that. I started shorting instead of, of trying to climb the floor. I, I, I started and I'm following the the flows, whatever the trend they yeah. were. And I ended up like 
60% up that month being 60% down. So it, wow. it, it was, it, yeah, it was, it was a pretty crazy month. Um, and that was also after I finished March 50, 60% up, I, I was already, I don't know, like a hundred percent up at the year, something like that or 80, I don't remember, but it was like, okay, you know what? This was like the test I, I needed to. I thankfully for me, I, I can reset my brain really fast, but I, I need to focus. Right. So I, I, I was able to do it. And then I, I right away wrap the rest of the year. So that, that was good. But for a moment, I was like asking uh, classmates uh, about jobs and stuff. I, I got really scared. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And um, for those of you, uh, for those people watching who, who maybe aren't familiar with your style, could you talk a little bit about the time frames you focused on, your your average holding period for a trade, um, and also kind of the average gain, average loss you're shooting for, and maybe um, your overall batting average, if you, if you have a sense of those statistics. Okay, so here's the part where I might answer a lot of it depends and you might hate me a little because <laughs> I do like a lot of different trading styles. styles. So, yeah. so basically I focus on intraday trading, like scalping. Mm -hmm. And I also do some swing and, and trading and, and position trading. So it's, it's pretty different. How do I trade uh, the two styles, right? For the, I don't know, for day trading, I, I don't take much, I don't usually do much about risk reward ratios mm -hmm. because sometimes I see strong level in a day and just, and just buy and if it doesn't work, I go out easily. What one thing about this market, this, this new days we have is that it's almost free to, to be wrong, right? So right. you buy and okay, it's not working. You just sell and you didn't you didn't lose anything, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't do a, a lot of risk reward ratio on on the scalping on the day trading. I focus a lot on like uh, strong supports. I try to see. I use a lot of the, especially I use the order book, and I try to find out where the big institutions are. Mm -hmm. So if I see a floor or a big order that it's absorbing volume, it's like, okay, I, there's my stop loss. So I'll just try to buy like one cent above it mm -hmm. and ride it if, if it goes to the other side. And if not, I, there's my stop. Mm -hmm. So that's, that will be my, my, my risk reward in like a, in like a scalping trade. Right. For the swing trading, I it, it it also depends a lot, especially on, on markets like markets like this. I try to do like a three to one uh, risk sure. reward, but that it's it's not completely accurate on these times because I don't know you you I'm trading a lot of new highs, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm trading a breakout of a stock that it's on a all time highs. Um, how do you calculate the the reward so okay you can have like a fibonacci extension and something like that and, and say okay it's gonna hit this price but but you don't really know for sure so i i try to focus more on the stop loss i use super tight stops i i try to get the trade to work for me fast and raise stop to break even Mm -hmm. So that's how I, I control my my risk and I might pyramid the trade up. If I'm trading something like in a range or something, I can manage more the risk reward ratio. So that might help when and I look for resistances and, and, and supports. Right. So that would be better. But also, for example, I don't know if you're trading a, a Mimi stock. Mm -hmm. It's but what's your risk reward? It's like, I don't know, you're, you're buying hood and it's going up 30% a day. You didn't think that will happen. And, and, right. and so it's, 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 it's tough for me on, on these markets. I mean, trying to adapt on, mm -hmm. on how it's working. And 
Chilean markets might be easier because they don't go, they go nowhere. So you can have more uh, specific ceilings and, and uh, there's no meme stocks. And in, there's no, no meme stocks in no, Chile. Not at all. No, yeah. Chile is boring, and it's been in in Chilean pesos. The market is in the same level that it was ten years ago. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. No. <laughs> I don't know. My recent work will be trying to minimize losses mm-hmm. and no big losses. That's like my mantra. Right. And super fast adapt my my stop loss to break even. And if if it's working fine, I might pair with that. But but if not if it's not working, I'm out. And and and, and I think that's one of the advantages of this like pre commission trading or really low commissions so yep. you can you can check okay is it working no okay i'm out is it working okay i'll buy some more oh it's actually working okay i buy some more and then my stop is break even okay didn't work yeah i didn't lose anything next one and so that's i don't know if that's really a good risk work ratio but it works for me <laughs> Gotcha. And I, I'm definitely looking forward to it. You, you told me that you marked up some charts with some trades, and I'm really looking forward to getting to that and, and talking about your setups. Uh, but just for now, in terms of general things, how do you determine how much of your account um, is committed to day trades, swing trades versus trying to hold a stock longer? Um, it, is it a set amount or do you just kind of go with the flow and see what's working in this particular environment? I... Oof. No, it, it will depend on volatility, on a lot of things. It, because, yeah. for example, I have my Chilean account. I have two US accounts. I have my crypto account. So it, it, it depends on the, on the scenario. For the scalping, I, I, so I try to close the intraday positions on the same day. So yeah. I, I feel like in my mind, like I'm not using a, a position. Right. But for like swing trading and stuff, I, I, I try to use different sizing depending on, on risk. I'm, I try not to, I don't know, risk more than 2% of my capital on a trade. Mm-hmm. In, in, in intraday trading, it's much less than that. Mm-hmm. And so it, I will adapt that with the stop loss I'm using or with the volatility of the name. Right. If I'm trading, I don't know, AMC, I'm not going heavily in size like I would be in Amazon or Apple, you know? So right. it, it's, it depends. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. And um, how much, um, if at all, of your kind of strategy techniques are fundamental versus technical analysis? Do you, do you use any fundamental analysis or it's, it's just kind of purely price action and looking at the, the level twos and, and seeing where, you know, people are positioned? I use both fundamental and and technical and also a lot of news and events, but mm-hmm. my fundamentals, I, I, I don't use like what I've seen from other guys, like, I don't know, Bill O'Neill or guys like that. I, I don't use P ratios or EPS if it's growing or shrinking. For me, the fundamentals will be, for example, I was heavily invested on a shipping company this year. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the shipping the rates are through the roof and they continue right. to go up. So uh, I saw that this uh, sector, it, it's, it will start growing. So I, I, I invested heavily in the stock. Uh, so I did some commodity plays last year and betting on like the and rebuilding and then all some um, retails betting on the like the the checks the people got so they are gonna go and, and spend some stuff spend some money so that's my my fundamental analysis i i focus more on like on sectors on what's like the economy or the what is gonna happen i i don't really care about ratios or or stuff and the technicals for the swing trading and more the position tradings, I use it to 
you try to find support resistances. I, I use some moving average, but it's it's mostly helping. I I, I follow mostly the, the price action, mm -hmm. like the okay where I see the trend going. What what's happening? Is it is this going up? I see a lot of volume. I see the institutionals buying, and I see a, I don't know a, a change of trends. It's like a I don't know. A commodity super cycle everybody's calling or it's i don't know it's the dollar going down right so so that would be like my fundamentals and i also trade a lot of like news and events mm -hmm. i have well, i have refinity i have some platform called trade the news i use twitter i use the discord channels i i follow a lot of people with news and i don't know i get a flash of Okay, this company released a new drug, and I will see the chart. Okay, is, is it reacting? Okay, boom, let's go. Mm -hmm. um, or I, I see. Okay, this company reported really good earnings. What's the guidance? Okay, tomorrow's gonna go up, so I, I'll, I'll be there early in the morning buying and stuff like that. So I, I, I I'm, I'm an event trader on on, on that behalf, especially for the the day trading. Very interesting. Very interesting. So very much news and macro trends versus kind of traditional fundamental analysis. That's really interesting. And, yeah. um, and I'm curious. So when you go into a trade, do you have your mind set that this is going to be a scalp, a day trade, or if, if, um, if you're entering a stock after really good earnings and you get profit right away in a nice cushion, will you then try to hold that for a swing trade? Or do you have kind of your set plan going in beforehand, how you'll manage that? I'm usually decided with, okay, I'm gonna do a swing trading with this one. I'm gonna let it ride and this one is gonna be an intraday trading, mm -hmm. but I might change my mind. Like, I don't know, in, in the market of clothes, I see some really strong buying on the name or if it just kept up yeah. on the day and it was like, okay, I'm not, I'm, I'm not touching it. I might leave it for another day and stuff like that. So that will make my mind change. Okay. Also, for example, I don't know, I trade a lot of, especially in Chile, um, like MCI rebalance, uh, FTSE rebalance. I don't know if you know about this, but in Chile, with it's not that liquid. It, it moves a lot the the scale. So when the news hit, the the stock it's will go trade. down instantly. So mm -hmm. you. You will say, okay, this stock is going down because of this, and and the, eventually it will go up because this is the the selling force. So I will change my I don't know my strategy depending on, on the news I'm getting. Gotcha, um, perfect. Um, so it, if you would, I, I'd love to see kind of um, a few examples of. Um, some recent stocks you traded, so we can talk about stock selection and how you pick to trade those stocks. So, uh, would you mind sharing your screen and and talking about a few uh, maybe recent news related stocks that you traded, and also maybe um, some earnings catalyst as well? Sure. So, for example, Hood, mm -hmm. it's a stock that I was I invested in the in private market before the IPO. So I was really watching the name when it started trading. So mm -hmm. I was checking it and, and saying, okay, I might sell the, the pre PO and then it started to go down. And I said, okay, I'm gonna wait. And one thing I learned and that I, I think I, I, I saw JC Barrett's writing about it also is that they, and I also do it, I, you can use the IPO prices mm -hmm. to be like uh, resistances. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it works sometimes in Robinhood, it was really fast, but in some names, like I think it was Palantir and, and some others, you can see like, I don't know, like forming a base, small base, and this will be a resistance, right? Right. So I said, okay, so I, I'm already watching the, the name. And I say, okay, if it if it breaks thirty eight, I'm I'm going, I'm gonna buy. Mm -hmm. So I, I bought it at thirty eight, and I and I thought, okay, I'm, I'm gonna try to aim for a five ten percent. 
but this thing went insane yep. in, in the first day. And, and I was like, okay, it's, I, I don't know what's going on. Then a lot of news starting, I don't know, Katie Woods buying, uh, and a lot of people was buying this and I said, okay, I'm, I'm gonna hold it another day. And I ended up say, selling at like 72 or something, like around here, like, because I was up like, I don't know, like a hundred percent, that, but that's not normal, right? So it was like going up, going up, going up, going up, going up. I was like, I'm gonna let it run as, as long as it can go. It was going up with volume. And when it started going down, I say, okay, I'm out. It's, it's, it's uh, I don't know, it's Christmas. So I, I, can, I can't really be more happy about it. So that's one trade I've been doing, or like trading this IPO basis, mm -hmm. like, like here, yeah. like Facebook, right? And, and, and I see a lot of IPOs. IPO, bam, didn't work. It forms a base here, and then it, it goes up. So that works. I, I, I think lately we are getting this faster than every than, than we used to have. Yeah. Markets, especially with all more the retail buyers. But it 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 usually works. IPO basis, I I I, I like to trade this. And um, um, and to us, um, could you talk about a little bit your chart layout and why you've picked uh, these different indicators as well as these different uh, moving averages as well as um yeah the Bollinger Bands the VWAPs and yeah your just overall chart setup that'd be cool to I'm, I'm sure I'll have questions in the comments about that. So when I started like doing serious trading like years ago, I I. I don't know, bought Metastock, I bought TC2000, I, I had wealth charts, trading view, I started joining all these seminars with these all oh, super incredible people selling all their, their indicators. And I bought a lot of expensive indicators, these AIs and, and stuff. And I also was, was reading, I don't know, MACD, ADX, whatever. And some, I have some friends that use the triangular moving average, the, I don't know. So I started trying everything. And, mm -hmm. and I started drawing a lot of lines and using a lot of indicators. And okay, the MACD is giving you a buy signal, but the RSI, it's not confirming. So you better not do anything. And then the bowling, your band is doing a sale so oh my god so what i'm gonna do so so then i started like deleting everything uh, and i deleted all the indicators i bought the trends super from i don't know super trader x and the ai that will make you rich i i, I lose them all and i and i was like okay what's everybody using mm -hmm. Okay, so everybody's using the 200 moving average and the 50, right? The simple one. Okay, so I'm gonna use that because everybody's using it. So I don't know, in, in Facebook here. I don't know, you can see that 200 works, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's simple as that. And I said, okay, so a lot of people says, uh, this is actually a weekly, but it, it the same point. Mm -hmm. A lot of people says that uh, technical analysis is like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So I said, okay, if it's if if is it, then use it on your advantage, right? So I don't know. The S and P it's been bouncing on the fifty days moving average for like this whole year, right? right so okay, right. so I said. I don't want to invent the wheel. I want to keep it simple. Everybody uses the the 50, the 200. It works for me. I, I, I checked it on most of my charts and yeah, it actually works. Okay, done. And then, okay, I, I'm, what am I? I'm a position trader. I'm a um, swing trader. Okay, I'm a, I might be a swing trader. 
Okay, so I need something shorter terms because I'm, I can't wait for the 50 days to, to stop my position or, or so I need something shorter. And I found out that the 21 EMA uh, really works for me to keep me on the place I want. And I usually use it also on the swing trades as a stop, as like a, a trailing stop. Mm -hmm. when my when it uh, goes up my break even point mm -hmm. so for example if i i don't know let me for example if, if i'm buying buying this breakout mm -hmm. so i bought here i i put my my break even fast here and when the 21 goes up my break even I will use the 21 as my stop, right? So it will keep me on the on the trade. So that's what I started. Then I decided, okay, volume, volume, it's it's really important. You better use volume because you, you can see if, if there's a real real move or not, or especially in Chile, you, you sometimes see because there's not much liquidity, mm -hmm. you can see a, a, a stock up. 8% because some guy just like made a mistake or the, he just wanted the, the stock to go up, but you will see it, 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 it was like one share. So, okay, no volume. So, so you need to use volume, right? Right. Um, so that's what I usually do. Then I started using BWAP for mm -hmm. my intraday charts and I found out that it works really well. And I've been using BWAP since I was a sales and trading uh, trader with all my hedge funds and orders. They were okay, buy me, I don't know, $3 million, five, 10 at BWAP or 20% of volume. So I, 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 I understood how the order works and okay. so. You can see that the VWAP is, is a really strong point for a really strong level in the intraday, right? Mm -hmm. And then I found out that somebody invented, I think it was pretty old, but um, they renamed it as the anchor VWAP. I think it was. Um, Alpha Trends, what's, what's, what's his name? Yeah, Brian Shannon. Yeah. Brian Shannon. Yeah. yeah. So he got the anchored VWAP on all the platforms. And I say, wow, this is, it's, just, it's actually great. So you can use the, the, the anchored VWAP. For example, I can give you a good example of the anchored VWAP that I use. Can you see it here? Yep. Coin. On a daily, yeah. Yeah. So, for example, I was trading coin. I, I traded here. I, I I was waiting for this long, like base to mm -hmm. to work, right? So when it when it broke up, I, I bought here, and I said, okay. So how do we see the next resistance? Because we can throw some lines here, but they're not really decided. We don't have much volume. It's a, like a really new name. And I was okay, why not we try the anchor viewer from the, from the IPO. Mm -hmm. And it was like magic. Mm -hmm. It was like, wow, it, it, it works as a resistance. So right now I'm, I'm, I'm watching this name and I'm, I'm waiting it for go up the anchor view up. And I actually have, have it on the, on the lower side that might work as a resistance like it worked here something here so that i think that works a lot also and i think it's a it's a great tool um the bollinger bands i try to use it i don't use use it much i try to use it to see when the volatility goes really low um, yeah when it pinches like that yeah yeah and, and you can see some explosive moves when mm -hmm. like they call it a contraction patterns or i i don't really know the, the specific names 
And I so I also use the RSI to see something it's really, really oversold or really overbought. I I I wouldn't care about the, the 30 or the 80. I, I care more about the 90 and the 20. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, for example, let me show you an example. So for example, in here, this is Ash. Can you see my no? Yep, I can see your cursor. Yeah, I can see the oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So this is a shipping company, Chilean shipping company that that owns 30% of one of the biggest shipping companies in the world, Habagloid. So it just basically went up all year, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I entered around here when I saw this really, really, really big volume because this is where one of the of the big shareholders of the company increased their position to their they maxed out his position. Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, the graph looked good. It it was holding the twenty. And I said, okay, I'm going out all in. And I went really heavily on this one. The, the rates were going crazy. The, I, there, there was a lot of buying. So, so I went strongly around this. I think it's like 40 or something. Mm-hmm. And then I held, I held, I held the name. And around this time, it started to go crazy. And the every side hit like, above 90 mm-hmm. and I say, okay, there must be some correction coming. And that's when I sold, I, I didn't sold at the top of course. And you can see, you can see some other dates that it held above 90, but it usually won't held for long. And it, it, it actually did that awful drop, right? Mm-hmm. It, it was a good sell. So I, I will use I will use the RSI like that. So to see like extreme overbought or oversold positions, but I I I use it more like to support my my ideas, gotcha. not something like the the holy grail. Gotcha, gotcha. And um, I'm curious. I, I don't want to make you go back to TC2000 if you don't want, but I I wanted to ask you about where you usually. Um, anchor your VWAPs to? Um, is it is it always the highest high and the and the lowest low, or are is it do you choose different spots depending on the stock? I've been learning to use it, to be honest. So I've been I've been trying it. I I think when it works the best for me will be on the latest high and the 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 recent lows. Right. And for IPOs, I I will always, if if the IPO was, uh, I don't know, a few months or a few weeks ago, not not for I don't know Facebook or something, but if the IPO was IPO was recent, I will anchor it to the IPO price, um, and sometimes if there is like a big event or a big volume or something that happens, I will anchor it there. Um, but to be honest, I'm 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 still learning to use it. I think it's a great tool, mm-hmm. and I know institutionals use BWAP, so I I don't see why it shouldn't work. I use BWAP a lot for my my scalping and my intraday trades. So I will show you a an intraday trade. So this one, for example, you you asked me something the other day or or today I don't remember but how I do my like my like where do I get my ideas and if I, I what do I do so I, I I have a lot of lists and stuff in, in Chile it's only like 20 names so, so you don't do much work but but I follow a lot of guys in Twitter and Instagram, and I and I'm in a lot of like WhatsApp groups with with friends that they talk about it. I I follow some Discord channels. I have some platforms that follow the short interest, mm-hmm. you know, Reddit stuff like that, so you can identify names, right? So mm-hmm. I try to to be open and 
find new ideas. I even, I don't know, sometimes you get the chart report every day at night. So it, I don't know if you know about the chart report, but it's a, a cool uh, mail that you get every night in your email with some cool charts. So I get ideas there. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm always open to ideas, right? So, so this name came from one of the guys on the, on one of the WhatsApp groups. And it, it, it appeared to be like a meme stock, meme stock. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I think this was on Monday. And he was like, hey, this, have you seen this name? It's going crazy. And I was like, okay, so let's, let's see what's going on with this. So it was at $5 and it opened at, I don't know, 8.50 or nine, right? Mm -hmm. Nine. So it was insane. And, and it started to hell there and it was going up really crazy. Okay, but anyway, it started here. And this is the big one, right? The orange man. Mm -hmm. So I'd say, okay, let's see if it holds the big one. And it started like moving around it, moving around it. And then it break, it, mm -hmm. it broke. And it was around 8.90, I went in. I said, okay, it, it's not holding the big one. The, this thing is, is going out. And then I bought at eight, the, I closed it. I made uh, like, I don't know, 10% I'm out, right? It's a name I don't know. I don't know why it's going out. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what's going on. Then it continued going down to seven, right? Mm -hmm. but, I, but I closed it here. I, I, I saw some support here. It bounced and I said, okay, I'm out. It was a good name. And then I remember the name for the next frame, next day. Mm -hmm. So that was a Monday. On Tuesday, well, yeah. So Monday, it, it held between seven and eight. And then on Tuesday, it opened at five again. Mm -hmm. So it was like, okay, what's going on? I'm, I'm gonna keep watching. And I and I remember that at seven, seven, it, it had a it had a good support. So I put an alarm here at seven and say, okay, let's see what happens. And then I got my alarm at around I don't know 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. And I was okay, so it's not hitting seven, it's it's going up, it's going up, it's going up. And in here, I said, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna dip in and try to see if, if, if this works. The, the B was, was really low, so I, I, I didn't really, I, I wasn't following the B was in this trade, but I, but I remember that the seven level was strong the day before, right? Right. And, and, and I saw it like moving here for three times and then started to move up and I said, okay, I, I'm gonna try it. Mm -hmm. And what's the next level I remember? Okay, the eight. Mm -hmm. So I, I did a fast trade till eight. So that would be a, a fast scalping for me, like, like just watching levels that I'd see that used to be support, um, used to be resistance. I will, I don't know, I will, I will put like one minute time frames. I start like doing lines and put alarms on it. And then I get, <laughs> I get an email, a text message, and uh, like a beep in my computer when some alarms goes up. Right. Sometimes my wife's uh, tell me to stop it because sometimes you get triggered after, after market. <laughs> right. Right. But like, that's one of my scalping and it's, so it's it's not usually like to make it simple it's one of the, these names it's, it's not somebody you will have on your market list and i don't know super list of eps growth and yeah the 50 moving average is above the 80 and the relative strength so it's 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 just names that they are working now and you are getting you can get 10% in a few minutes and right. only if you are like just watching it. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's 
really impressive about these markets and, and you have to take advantage of it. But that's when I use super tighter stops. So if I enter at seven, I will, I won't go to the bathroom or do anything until the stock starts working. And then I'll immediately put my stop loss at break even, right? Mm -hmm. So that's like one of the things I will do. And what kind of position size are you putting on of your, maybe as a percentage of your total account in a, in a scalp trade like this? In a scalp trade like this, I, 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 I'm not risking more than 1% mm -hmm. of your total. Account. I, yeah. And, and in, in names like this, I, I, it might be less mm -hmm. because even, I don't know, even if you set your stop loss right away, it, it can move with quick. some platforms. It, yeah, it can move yeah. quick and, and your stop loss, it will be hit 3% or 5% down, right? So you, you, you have to control the risk. Even you, you can't really rely on, on, on interactive brokers. I, I, actually, I, I trust, I trust it much more than Robinhood, but but sometimes these names just give you like a big spike or they i don't know get halted mm -hmm. uh, and and it gaps down and 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 you couldn't sell so you you, you can't risk much right and uh, i wanted to ask you this actually earlier because you talked about how um in that march correction you swung from negative down 60 percent to up 60 percent that seems like quite a volatile account um, are you, go, are you putting on a lot of, a lot of, yeah, of course. Yeah. Are, are you putting on a ton of margin? Um, well, what's kind of your strategy when it comes to margin and, and, um, getting really exposed in the market? In March, I used, I started using a lot of margin going down and trying to, like I told you, like revenge, get yeah. yeah, revenge trade and, and, and doing completely stupid things. And then I eventually stopped, but in, I think it was in April, mm -hmm. I went all in on this, for example, this Chilean stock. You see it? Mm -hmm. So this is a iron ore stock. Mm -hmm. so this is March. And this stock I, 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 I was following a lot. And it went down big like everything of course yeah. and then it had a rebound and then in here we saw this big volume that it was a, a really big hedge fund that got liquidated right and one of the good things about chilean markets or maybe the bad things i don't know it's that you kind of know what's what's happening if if you work in the industry so you can ask around hey what happened what was the block you know that got got liquidated so so you knew there was this strong selling force here that it it, it wasn't it was gone right. Mm -hmm. So then I, I I waited for it to like to work out and and, and this level held a little that I also use Fibonacci levels I, mm -hmm. I I love those and it worked perfectly and. And I said, okay, I'm going all in this name. It was an I don't know name. The, the I don't know was, was rebounding. At that time, China was like going all in on reconstruction and everything, and let's boost the economy. And I was like, okay, so that, that will be like a fundamental for me. It was like, okay, mm -hmm. what's the worst that could happen? Yeah, okay, I think it already happened. Everything is rebounded, US markets. And I say, okay, I think it's time to go all in. And in here, I bought a hundred percent of my capital on the same stock. I knew that everything is, I don't do it that often. Mm -hmm. I, I think I've done it like three or four times, but it's those times that you see, okay, this, this is it and you go, you need to go heavy. And I sold here like half of it uh, with, I don't know, it was like a 40% move in like a month or so. 
mm -hmm. and then then I help to the rest around here when it, uh, it didn't broke the didn't 21 out much yeah yeah so I will go heavily on leverage when I feel I have to I I think it's super cheap to use leverage so it, it's it's stupid not to use it it's tough to use it because you get used to it and then you start leveraging when you shouldn't so you gotta like slap yourself in the face and say okay this is not the time to do it yeah. and it's a constant battle with yourself but i i try to use leverage when i can and when i feel i, I should gotcha and how, how are you managing risk on that initial buy and, and did you go a hundred percent right off the bat in one buy or are you kind of pyramiding into that position? This one, I think I bought like 50% of the position here. And when it started to, to work, I just bought more right away. I thought it was the time to, to buy. The stock was like the one of the most, the worst one names in, in the Chilean market on, the, on these days. It, it, it had, nothing to do with the Chilean market because it, right. it like exports iron ore to China. So it, 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 I thought, okay, this is, this is really stupid. This name shouldn't be this cheap. They didn't have any debt. They had like a lot of cash, so they weren't going broke. Then I don't know. It, it just felt like this, this is it. Gotcha. And it's, I don't know. On a risk reward or risk management matter, maybe it wasn't the right decision if you want to be like a purist about it. Mm -hmm. But I I think there's sometimes where you you see things and you have to follow your gut and say, oh, this is it. I I, I have to go strong. Gotcha. But sometimes sometimes you go you see the charts and. Uh, or you see a name and it was and it did exactly what you thought and you say wow it was so obvious that it was going to do that and i didn't do anything about it so in here i like i don't know i was a on the name right so if if you see the opportunity you want to have size in that opportunity so if it works out it actually it moves the needle is basically what you're saying yeah yeah especially on the chilean markets because one of the things of the Chilean markets is that when you get a good run on a on a on a name, it will go up four percent Monday, four percent Tuesday, four percent Wednesday, mm -hmm. and that's a parabolic move, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, wow, this name is like the best name of the year, and it went up twelve percent. Mm -hmm. So in, in the U.S., you can have four percent with Amazon or like a normal name, right? You're going to have AMC 100% on a day. Mm -hmm. So in Chile markets, you need to, I don't know, to find these spaces and, 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 and try to bet on it heavily because they, they won't happen much. Right. Um, they tend to reverse. And so it's like I told you before, you can't like, I don't know, buy and hold in Chile. It's like the worst business ever so you gotta try to find these opportunities and, and get the best out of it. gotcha and um i i was really curious about this you, you mentioned um you previously worked um placing trades for hedge funds and they use the anchored vwap a lot could you talk a little bit about your experience with that and and how hedge funds would place trades around the, the those levels sure not the anchored vwap the the vwap the vwap yeah yeah but yeah, so I don't know, you are on the, on the trading desk and you call the hedge fund or a pension fund and it's like, hey, what do you want to do? And they say, okay, I, I want to buy a million shares of Amazon at BWA. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, so back in the day, you, you had to do it manually, like in an Excel chart. And, and these days you get onto Fidesa or some platform and you just put the order and it will, the algo will do it for you. Right. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that it, you have to buy when you need to buy. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So if, if the guy tells you, okay, I, I want BWAP at the end of the day, it's you can't do worse than BWAP. So you, you have to go constantly, you have to be constantly watching the price action and seeing what happens. Okay, big block here. Okay, boom, I need to buy 50,000 more shares. Mm -hmm. Okay, nothing's happening. Nothing, okay, another block. Okay, I need to buy something else. So, so it, it, it works like that. And that's, I think that's because they don't really want uh, somebody to like, I don't know, manage your order. They, they just want it to do at the average price of the day. And they don't really mm -hmm. care if, if you did it well or not, they, because sometimes you can do it better. Sometimes you can do it worse. They just tell you, no, do it at the average price of the day and the volume average price of the day and, and, and i'm happy with that and if you do it better oh awesome for you i might give you more more business tomorrow but it, it don't really care so that's how i learned that that level is really really important for them because they are measured by that level also so it's right. like okay they have these scorings for the brokerage houses they use and on um, research, um, trading, execution, um, ideas, and, and trading execution is, did this guy bought it cheap or did it bought it more expensive than the Viva? And that's it. So it's a really, really, really strong level. So, um, so this kind of creates patterns that, that you, you focus on. Is that right? Kind of throughout the yeah. day, you're watching the anchor VWAP level, or not not anchor, but VWAP level very carefully and seeing how price is reacting to try to get a sense of what large institutions are doing. Exactly. So you can, I know, and you can start having like a sense that, I don't know, for, for some institutions will be, okay, buy me 30% of the volume uh, VWAP and mm -hmm. I give you an infinite order, right? So every time in, in the US market, it's, it's tougher to see because it's too much volume, but in, in less liquid markets, you can see these algos working, right? So, okay, some, sometimes you see a, a big block going out and boom, some, some random buy order will, will catch the offer. Mm -hmm. And you can start, that's that's what I do a lot is you're going to start identifying those orders and you see, okay, so here's a big institutional buying and some percent of the volume. So let's see if, okay, who's selling nobody. Okay. So this guy is going to keep buying all day. So it's mm -hmm. going to keep the price up and they don't really care much about the price as long as they're in the, in the average price right so gotcha so you can use that in your favor and and i don't know front running i, I don't know if that's the right word but but you can use it to to find i don't know some support and, and see what's going to happen in the name and um tomas at any given time kind of how many positions are you watching at once and how many how many positions overall would be in your portfolio? That would depend on the markets. Mm -hmm. So like I told you, Chilean markets, you can't really trade more than 20 names. Mm -hmm. So I won't use more than in, in, in any markets. I, I try not to do more than, than 10 mm -hmm. different names, but the, the watch list in the U S can be, I don't know, infinite. And it will depend on what I'm thinking, what I'm seeing on different sectors. I can, I, I don't know, I can try, I can load an ETF on the TC2000 and see all the, the members of the ETF to see which one has a, a good setup. So it, it, it really, it's, uh, it depends on uh, some mini stocks that I could see an article on, business insider or something like that so i i it's it's super random I, I guess i try to keep like the usual names i trade on on not so much mm -hmm. 
So I would say I might have like some 50 names that I I usually go like every weekend to check. And then I add more ETFs and if I, and if I see like, I don't know, a strong lithium name playing mm -hmm. that went up the week, I will go check the lithium ETF and I'll check like the all the members of it and try to find, okay, this one is doing better or this one is doing worse or this one is ready for a breakout. But it, it, it really de depends a lot. In Chile, I usually trade the, the same same names, I say, mm -hmm. every day. So I think I kind of know how they work mm -hmm. because I stir up the same names all day for I don't know, years. So I think that's a good thing if you're an intraday trading, try to know your names. And learn, the, learn the character of, of how they trade. Exactly. And how they work, how they move. Okay, it's, it's easy to have. Some people would like to use, I don't know, um, uh, standard deviations, or you can watch it. Okay, 5% move for this one. No, that's too much. It, 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 it's got to reverse. Alice is a big news. Mm -hmm. So unless you really watch the names, you, you don't have an idea. You can put an indicator and say, oh, okay, it's oversold, it's overbought. But uh, my advice would be just, Keep watching it and watching it and watching it. Makes sense. And um, as you're flipping through ideas, going through those ETFs, what would you say is a good setup for you? What, what would made you pause in the chart? And also, as you're looking at a chart, what are the different elements that you're looking for to basically decide whether this is uh, worth putting on your watch list? I like big bases. Mm -hmm. Like... This one I bought today, for example. So you, I, somebody mentioned it like weeks ago. Or I don't really remember how I got the name, mm -hmm. but I, I had it on my watch list and I had this level and I had an alarm, right? So what, what do I like in this name? So it has a big base mm -hmm. since February. It, it hasn't much, doesn't have much history because it, it's IPO last year, but it has a gap here mm -hmm. that, so there's some interesting levels and did a big base. Volume, it's eh, not working, but today we got some volume. Mm -hmm. So I, I, entered, I entered today on, on the breakout, but because mostly because I like the base, mm -hmm. I like that it didn't break out here, then it almost and it almost. It got tighter I'm, and tighter. Yeah. Yeah. So at the first, I thought, okay, I'm going to buy it, see if, if it works. I, I dip in it. I say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm putting a stop loss around 120 on the, on the 21 EMA. Um, and it apparently worked today. So now my break even is at, uh, now my slow loss. Stop less if that is a break here. And I'm hoping it will fill the gap around here, but at least I think it can get to 140. So that that's some, something that if, if I'm going through the charts, mm -hmm. I would find it interesting, right? A big base from a few weeks, few months, and some levels that are that are working. And it looks like the the trend changed a while, yeah. so that that I find it interesting. Um, other things that I find it interesting are, for example, if it held some levels that I'd usually check. Um, another name I'm watching is, for example, this one that I've been watching for a while. It's a lithium player. Mm -hmm. they had a really really good year and this level it's been tough to break for a few days mm -hmm. and today it broke it mm -hmm. so i i'm not completely sold in this one because this is new all-time high mm -hmm. 
but I'm watching it and I'm watching comparables from this company because this sector tends to move in groups. really similar. And I also follow this. This is a Chilean idea, so I follow it a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's been doing nothing basically. And it's I'm waiting for it to break the 55, and I think I got to go to 60, but, but I'm waiting. Um, another one I got from, from Twitter, it was Pfizer, for example. Mm -hmm. Somebody tweeted, oh, hey, have you seen the Pfizer resistance? And I was, OK, I, I loaded the chart, and I see, wow. So this guy. Hit it here on 98, 99, mm -hmm. didn't work. 2000, 2001, then 2018. So I said, whoa, this is actually a level that you should care about, right? Right. So I, I put an alarm here and I'm ready to break. And when it broke, I, I got in. It, it worked immediately. It's not a really explosive stock. Mm -hmm. So you can go. You can get more size. And I got in, I I put my stop loss in break even and I got out on the it, it wasn't that good, but it, it's it's a name I will follow. And um on the day where you're potentially buying a breakout through resistance level, um could you could you walk me through kind of your 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 process here? Um basically once you get an alert, what do you do? How do you, where do you put your stop loss? Um, and w when would you kind of move that up to break even as well? So, for example, if, if this opens up in 48, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't touch it, right? So, okay, it, it, it's gone. I, I, it didn't give me a chance to, to get in, but mm -hmm. what day was it? Or if you want to go over the the U example, because that happened just um, today, that'd be great. So you you opened up really fast in here, right? Mm -hmm. But it but it didn't run away right away, so. I got the alarm, I opened the chart, I watched it a little, I was, okay, let's see if it holds. Mm -hmm. And the BWAT, was, the BWAT was joining the price section, right? Mm -hmm. So it held, it held, it held. And I said, okay, I bought something here. And then I think I added around here. Mm -hmm. uh, now I'm, I'm letting it write. Um, it's it was pretty fast. I got the alarm and it's well, two. Okay, let's see. It. And when I'm when I'm watching the name, I'm only watching the name because if these things can go sideways really fast, yeah. Uh, and I don't wanna. I don't want to miss it or I don't want to lose the money I, I invested in. So, okay, is it working? Is it working? Is it working? Apparently, okay, let's wait, let's wait, let's wait. Okay, let's go in, let's check. Cool, yeah, okay, it's working. Okay, let's gonna add a little more. Okay, it'll work. Mm -hmm. So, that's what I'm, what I'm trying to see. Maybe I, if this continues to go up we are on a stronger volume, I might add something. Maybe if it goes above 140, I might add to it. Mm -hmm. But so far, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the trade. I think it's working. It might not work tomorrow, but I will stop out on a break even, right? So I, I, I think I'm a little higher than that. But so I try not to complicate things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 all good. I was just going to say, uh, so now you've moved your stop to break even. And um, basically, do you do that af after 
on the first day, if, if it works, it goes up 3% from your cost, you move it up to break even, or is there a different process that you follow? Basically, I, I'm asking when do you move up your stock to break even? I try to move it the same day, especially same day. on maybe not on some Chilean stocks that won't move more than 1%, but with these markets that I see and, and, and names that go up 5% with no news or whatever news and some other names that goes 10% up or 10% down. I, I try to move the stop loss to break even really, really fast. Mm -hmm. I've One of the things that I've tried to do over the years is like hold longer positions and, and try to change my own mind. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I learned is that my mind works like this and I'm, I'm going to be constantly watching it and and I tr need to adapt my trading to my mind and to my personality so right. it's it's okay if it works it's gotta work right now and then I'm gonna write it if it doesn't work next and next and next I'm sitting here all day I trade a lot in Chile market site super active Mm -hmm. So I, if if it doesn't work, I don't care. I will do it again and again and again and again. And I, I don't know. In, I trade probably like a hundred times a day. Wow. And most people will tell you that's over trading. <laughs> Maybe that might be, but I, I, it it works for me, right? So it fits your personality. It, it's it's yeah. what vibes with you. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And um. So going back to that initial buy of you, where's that first stop loss um, before you move to break even? Is it just under that uh, that little shelf on the one minute chart? In this particular stock, I was trying to look for a, a, a bigger trade, like try to get to this gap. 140. Gotcha. 140. So I thought, okay, I, I might give it a little more room, like 122. So it's gotcha. a little more than one one mm -hmm. reward, but I but I wanted to see if it worked really fast. And I, I was following the, the 20 EMA that had worked here. I, I don't think I will follow the no the 200 is too much, but I, I was following this this the, the 20 EMA and, and there was like this price around here. So that was my my initial thinking. But the main thinking will be okay. Let's let's do if it works. Mm -hmm. Let's watch it for now, mm -hmm. um, and it worked. So, but I would have put my stop my stop on the on the twenty, mm -hmm. a little lower. Yeah, and from from what you said of your really faster paced scalps. If it doesn't work right away, you're just cutting it. Like before, you take a, a very you you are only taking very small losses on that. Yeah, no, I will yeah. buy. Didn't move. Okay, I'll wait. Um, for 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 example, if I'm taking a scalp, I don't know, one thirty, right? So okay, mm -hmm. so I see a strong institution buying on one thirty. Yeah, I will put an order like like a friend like to call me like 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 the rats like 130.1 right mm -hmm. so so okay i'll i'll try to get filled the cheaper i can get and wait mm -hmm. so if somebody stop hitting the bid at 130 and 130 hell everybody will start okay there's some big guy here they are going to try to close their their short positions and then the stock will will go up right mm -hmm. so when that happens, I will say, okay, this guy's big and they are all going to start closing the shorts. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to scale up also, try to, to help the trend. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And, and then uh, when you got more yeah. volume during the day, the same guy in 130 might need to go up because he started getting some volume at 1.30, but 10 a.m. And then it's 2 p.m. and the stock is trading at 1.35. And he only ha got, I don't know, half the position he, he needs. And it's he has a good price, so he, he can 
he can raise his his order, right? So he needs to get filled eventually. So that's what I'm I'm trying to to find out. It's really cool. You're really thinking about what the the big money, the institutions are doing, and and trying to kind of play off that a little bit. That that's a really cool mindset to have. Yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to do because that, uh, actually, so in the end, in Chile, it's all about institutions. In the U.S. now, it's well, the retail players are really moving markets, and I, I'm also yeah. trying to get advantage of that with some. Of the, of the meme stocks and, and some yeah. of the names I trade, Hood and I don't know BBIG and, and stuff like that. But but I don't know. I, I, that's that's one of the things I, I say. So I've seen all these guys saying, "Oh, I've been trading the same setups for over forty years, and I've been doing great." And it's it's, it's great for them. But I think you you need to adapt. Sometimes things stop working. Mm-hmm. And if you don't try to do new things, then it, it will be painful for you. Mm-hmm. I've seen this guy, for example, this guy called, I forgot his name, but his, his nickname is like Hit the Beat. I see his video sometimes. And I, I found it, he's really funny. And he was like, he's like a big BWAP trader. Mm-hmm. He's been trading BWAP for like 20 years. And I saw him last day giving an interview and he was like, I'm not trading BWAP these days. We have mm-hmm. all these moves of 30, 40%. And I don't care if I'm not trading my my cup of tea. I need to trade what needs to be done. So right. you get, you need to, I don't know, this is a business. And sometimes you do what you got to do, right? So you're going, you're, you're trading where the opportunities are basically. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Um, I, I'd love to go over some some meme stocks and how you've been trading those. If if you want to talk about uh, AMC or GME, whatever uh, you've probably traded the most. So I traded those really earlier this year, but I, I stopped a while. Mm-hmm. The the latest one was the the one I told you earlier. Yeah. TVIG that this made some really big swings. Mm-hmm. I traded one called COS on January, mm-hmm. but I had no idea what was what was it. It was an insane move yeah. here. And so this this volatility is where you thrive as a as an intraday trader uh, with the the big swings up and down. Yeah, but this one is. Unless you are watching it or somebody told you about it, it's like you completely missed the move, right? So right, right. Everybody was talking about GME, and I started like joining the Reddit uh, boards and following some people. And then one guy in one of the discords I follow this these guys that I, I found that really great, the uh, dumb money. Chris Camilo and Dave Hansen and, and, and Jordan, they, they do these yeah. videos, they're really fun. And Dave Hansen told, said something in one video and said, no, I'm buying this company called Cost that I have no idea what that is, but I read it that it's going to be huge. Mm-hmm. And I bought, I, I don't really remember the names, but look at this move. It was like yeah, crazy. 60, 40. For her. So it's 1500% on In like four days. two days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's, it's insane. And unless you are reading these chat words and following people on Twitter, uh, you're not going to find these moves. You might find other moves, and, and that's okay. You, 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 you can still trade Tesla and make really big mind um, a lot of the names but this i don't know this it's i have fun trading this i i have lost some money i have with this one i made i i it was insane mm-hmm. and you're just doing kind of scalps on this are you, are you holding overnight there's a lot there's a lot of kind of gap down risk with these type of names yeah i know in this one i think i held 
for like one day and I sold after markets. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the other thing of this of the markets these days. The pre-market and aftermarket boom. It's all are, just the market. Yeah. It, exactly. So it's like right now it unless you are you have Robin Hood that they limit you on the on the time of when you can buy or sell. But with interactive brokers, you can sell at whatever time it is. And sometimes they this thing keeps moving and it's 30% of the day. And then the aftermarket is 20% more. Right. <laughs> right. So it's crazy times. Absolutely. And um, you mentioned, I don't know if it was before we, we start recording, but you're also involved with uh, the crypto markets. Is that something you've been trading quite a bit? So I've been at very active in crypto since 2017 or so. Mm -hmm. I used to trade a lot. I even traded like for New Year's Eve and stuff. My wife had to tell me to sell everything so we can enjoy a few days off. Because these crypto things, they don't even close on weekends, right? right so they don't right. they don't care if it's New Year's or Christmas or anything. So I I I, I had to, to sell a little and <laughs> it was crazy. And then I've been involved in, in, in some of the names. I made a lot of money on, on the on 2017 when it went up. Then I lost almost everything when it went down. Trading because when it went up, I thought I was like the best crypto trader in the world. And yeah, it, of course, it was going up for a It was it, then it went down, and I okay, I found out okay, so I'm not I'm not really this good at crypto trading. Mm -hmm. So I stopped trading a little. I I started more like buy and hold, mm -hmm. and I started buying Ethereum. I, I like seventy five percent of my my crypto is in ether i in, if, if, if i think that's i love it and mm -hmm. um, i i think the the crypto space is here to stay and it's it's only gonna grow and bitcoin is gonna go to 1000 i mean to 100,000. and and i think it's like the future i have some nfts i no, I, I love the sector. I, I, I love how to trade today, but some more. The I'm Ethereum really the, the Ethereum chart looks quite good. If you go you can E T H E, you can see it in TCU thousand, the the trust. Um what draws you so much to e Ethereum the versus Raker? Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it's it's getting to all time highs. Yeah. So the, the thing about ETH that I like is that I think it has more uses than Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So Bitcoin is going to be like the digital gold, right? So right. it's and it's the less risky and, and, and institutions are going to buy it and everything. But if I see it has a lot more things to do once the, the prices of, of gas gets lower. But yeah, I like all the smart contracts. I, I'm really strong in, in DeFi. Mm -hmm. I, I think the DeFi environment it, it's it's gonna grow exponentially. It's been growing a lot. I am I invested in a couple of DeFi um, startups. I I think the NFTs also are gonna continue to grow. I think the boom right now I, I don't know if it might last might last a lot or not, but I think the NFTs are gonna continue growing. Uh, and they're mostly everything runs on on Ethereum network. So I'm I'm really bullish. Mm -hmm. Have you looked into um, SOL or ADA at all? Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I, I think I I completely missed the the SOL run. And insane move. Yeah, and I think we might get some SOLs or ADA or a lot of those because that's the th that's the other thing about this space. It might not be the thing on I don't know two more years, right? So yeah. So it, that's another thing that I like. It's like you have to be constantly like reading and learning and because 
things happen every day. It's incredibly fast how it happens. And um, you said you're you're kind of you're taking up the mindset of more of a buy and hold investor here. Um, are you are you following the trend of Ethereum? If it really starts showing distribution, would you get out of it, or are you really just trying to accumulate as much as you can? I I think Ethereum is still going up, so mm-hmm. I'm 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 still heavily invested. I sold some today to buy other projects like uh, more like Ave and Comp and trying to buy more NFTs. <laughs> I, I think it's it's fun. But I, I think there's a lot of room for for growth. Yeah, for growth. And I and I think there's a lot of room for Bitcoin. So and as long as Bitcoin's Bitcoin goes up. It, I think it, everything will go up. I'm, I'm pretty confident there will be an ETF of Bitcoin soon, mm-hmm. um, because I think the U.S. government needs to tax, needs the money. So they need, if if they do a Bitcoin ETF, there will be a lot of institutions buying in, and they will get some taxes from it so it will right. be more easier for them so i i i think the sector is just gonna continue growing mm-hmm. perfect um uh g- game back to stocks a little bit uh i was curious whether you had kind of a go-to setup overall for position trading swing trading that that you really like to use so i don't really have a, a go-to setup to use mm-hmm. Like I told you, I just keep watching the charts and see if the trend is up. One thing, like the one I told you, for example, is in in Chilean markets, it's like you can't wait for the 50 moving average to be above the 200 and pointing up and the being in, I don't know, accumulation phase. It's if you do that, you will never trade anything. So you just gotta try to catch small trends and small rebounds in the us i I like to trade breakouts a lot Mm -hmm. if not all-time heights and like small pivots Mm -hmm. and but mostly following the trend uh, big bases i like big bases i think what's What's like the everybody says it's like the bigger the base, the bigger the, the space. Or yeah, like the space. Some of it, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And are all of your trades planned beforehand, or do you have some intraday scans that you run to try to find? Um, I don't know if you want to answer this either with your swing trading mindset or or your scalping mindset. But uh, do you do you plan everything out beforehand before the open, or do you kind of react to what you're seeing throughout the day? I have some levels in my mind or mm-hmm. on some spreadsheets I write or some charts I, I have the levels and I try to think what I will do if it hits the level of not. Right. But for the scalping, I do a lot of trades in the moment. So I see a new algo or a new institution buying and I say, okay, there's some buying force, let's go. Mm-hmm. And okay, it didn't work. So I will do a lot of trades like that and instantly without thinking much. Um, swing trading, I will think more about it. I will say, okay, um, let's see if it hits 100, I will get out or I will buy more if, if it's going up. So I try to, on the position trading, on the swing trading, I try to eliminate the emotional compound of it. I think that's something you should try to do mm-hmm. because it's harder to react when something unexpected happens and, and you don't know what to do. So if right. you thought about it earlier, it will be much easier to react. Mm-hmm. But in the intraday of sculpting, it's it's 
I just make decisions like in, in a second. And uh, what do you think for you um, is responsible for more of your performance, the, the intraday scalping type setups or the, the kind of the swing trading position trading um, positions that you take on? I think last year it was 70% position trading, mm -hmm. especially after April that I yep. went really long and I held the positions. Right. But usually I, I, I would say it's 50, 50 mm -hmm. because, because I also trade my positions, right? So I, if I'm long in a name, I will trade it intraday. So right. if, I, if I see it's going down, I will sell it and, and, and rebuy it if it doesn't hit my stop. Um, I think one, that's one of my advantages mm -hmm. that, I, that I can do it and I'm, then I'm watching the screen, I have the time to do it. So I might, I don't know, get 1% more instead of losing 5%, I'm gonna lose four or something like that if it goes down. So I try to do that. So you're trying to trade around your positions and try to get as much alpha as you can, basically makes sense. Yeah. And, um, could you, could you walk me through maybe your, your weekend routine, how you prepare yourself for, uh, the market next week. Um, and also I'd love to hear about your daily routine afterwards. My daily routine is, it's not that exciting. <laughs> I, I kind of start the night before reading the, some of the newspapers that are going out for the next day. I I try to read all the news. I go to my computer. I set up all my my charts, my my platforms for next day. Then I woke up around five thirty in the morning, mm -hmm. maybe six. Depends how many times I hit snooze button. Then I will go through all the news that I could see. I, I will try to check um, if there were some earnings on the names I'm holding or mm -hmm. earnings on the names I'm following. Uh, I have some services that sends me news of mm -hmm. uh, some alerts, you know, some, some watch lists. Like, I don't know, like, uh, well, trade the news. I have um, Sig Alpha, well, Refinity. I, then I get to my office and try to recheck the charts a little, especially the, the positions I have. Mm -hmm. And if any news related to my names, if, I, if there are any news related to my names, I will say, okay, how is this gonna uh, hit the name? Is it gonna do anything? Okay, what are the levels? Um, okay, if, if, if this, I don't know, for example, one of my trades is, okay, I'm gonna buy this name because it has earnings tomorrow and I expect it to go awesome. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it didn't go awesome. So, okay. The, the thesis is gone. I'm going to sell right on the open. I'm going to hit the bid. I, I don't care the price mm -hmm. or, or it went awesome. Okay. So I'm, I'm expecting to do 5% in this. Okay. So, okay. I'm going to watch the name and when it hits 5%, I'm going to sell half. I'm going to watch it. So I try to like to picture a little of, of what's going to happen in the day. Right. So I, I'll be a little more prepared. And that will be like every day. I, I used to, last year, especially with, with COVID, I used to work a lot more. So I would spend all time watching charts, watching seminars and stuff because you couldn't do anything. And now, now I, I'm more, we go out with my wife, we walk the dog, et cetera. But in the weekends, I always leave at least three, four hours to check the charts also. Mm -hmm. to to prepare the week to to see what what happened what did i miss um and i try to leave at least like one hour especially to check like awful traits mm -hmm. i i did on the week post analysis yeah 
yeah. some post analysis um, or not awful trades, but sometimes it's like, okay, why did I sell this? It was the chart says that I should have held it or why didn't right. I sell it? But uh, it was so clear that this is a big resistance. So, so okay, and then try to do that and on the weekends. It's not that fun. <laughs> And um, outside of trading, what do you kind of do to to de stress and uh, try to forget about trading a little bit? And 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 yeah, what do you like to do outside of it? I like to travel a lot. So mm -hmm. last year was tough. <laughs> yeah, but but we travel a lot. We we go out a lot. In in Chile, I own a bar, a, a couple of restaurants. So we we used to go out a lot. We. We bought a dog last year and we we play a lot with her. It's it's, it's awesome. I uh, like to hear music also a lot. I used to play. I used to be like a professional DJ back in. Oh, really? Three years ago, yeah. So I, I I still try to listen some music. So that's it, but not much time. A lot of Netflix and. Um, HBO and series. I'm, I'm a super serious fan. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Uh, well, Tomas, thank you so much for, for walking through your process and, and your routines. Um, I always like to finish it off with one last question. Um, what advice do you have for new traders just starting out um, or maybe traders who are a little bit more experienced, but are struggling at the moment? Uh, what, what would you kind of say to them and, and what, what advice would you give them? So, my advice will be the first one will be like practice 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 consistency is the key and don't use paper accounts mm -hmm. i think that's the worst idea ever because i know a lot of people that are really profitable on their paper accounts and they trade with real money and they found out this thing called the mind and emotions that come in play with real money in 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 the game so don't do it so trade with less money but you still have the mental thing trying to to blue you so that's one thing about trading is that like your mind is trying to play the other way around right so right. It, it's it's crazy um try to eliminate that mental part and stop loss always mm -hmm. um the losses, try to mitigate the losses. One of the big things I got from market wizards is that you don't have to hit home runs every time. Mm -hmm. So it's more about not losing uh, the money than getting rich on one trade. Right. So I think that's, that's, a, that's a big lesson I learned. And it's doable. A lot of people do it. So wh whoever can do it. That's one thing about, I like the name of, of, of these guys. I told you the dumb money team, but it's like, Hey, we're the dumb money. Like we're not the smart money. And, and in Wall Street and everybody in the newspapers, they keep telling you, Hey, you shouldn't trade. It's you're going to lose all your cash. You should give it to experts. Nobody can do it. Nobody can beat the S&P longer than two years. And books like Market Wizards, uh, now you got Twitter and you got a lot of, I don't know, the competition, everything. You see people that consistently do it. So it, it's, right. it's doable. So consistency is the key. You have to be really consistent. Mm -hmm. um, you have to think about it as, as it's a real thing, not a not like fun thing not not like a game so like a business right like a business right so and also another thing it's like like it's a real business it's something people it's a profession right it's it's my life i live on it so yeah don't try also to or do try but you can't really i don't know it's 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 complicated you can't shorten the learning curve really you can learn faster mm -hmm. but you won't be a trader in a few weeks after you read the, your market book mm -hmm. 
or you, I don't know, you do the CMT and you know how to calculate, um, I don't know, some levels, it, 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 it's it consistency. Takes it yeah. takes time and it takes a lot of patience and risk management, that's the key. Perfect. Uh, well, Tomas, thanks again for taking the time and sitting down with me. And um, I'm sure everybody watching enjoyed this immensely and, and took a lot from it. So um, thanks again, Tomas. And to everybody watching, if you did enjoy it, go ahead and leave a like down below and subscribe for more great interviews just like this one. Um, and Tomas, is there any place that people should re out, reach out to you if they've got questions? Um, I'll probably link your Twitter down below, but it, are there any other websites or links that I should put down in the description as well? I try to answer everything I get on Twitter. Mm -hmm. maybe not so fast like you realized but <laughs> <laughs> but i try to do it so just follow me there and and, and talk to me i'm happy to reply also on linkedin i, I try to reply but I, I also not so fast but I, if i can do it i'm happy to perfect uh we'll leave it there thanks again tomas and uh to watching thank you yep we'll see you guys in future videos thanks <laughs> <laughs>